Good day, students. My name is Jai Akitinolu Watosi, your physics teacher for today. Today's topic is electric currents. I mean electric current. What's our behavior objective? Our behavior objective is that at the end of the lesson, students should be able to define electric current and potential difference. Two, describe types of electric circuits. Three, state Ohm's law. Four, state factor that affect the resistance of a wire. Five, solve simple calculation on current, resistance, and potential difference. Let's look at the content. What is electric current? An electric current is the rate of flow of electric charge past a point or region. What we are saying is that when an electric charge move from one point to another in a circuit or in a conductor then we are talking about electric current and the standard metric unit for current is ampere the current is simply the ratio of the quantity of charge and the time and we said that current which is represented as i is equal to q quantity of charge divided by time i said current is represented as i is equal to q all over t since the charge is measured in coulombs and time is in seconds, so the unit of electric current is in is coulomb per second or ampere or ampere. And the current flow from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the cell. Let's look at a, an, a simple electric circuit. In a simple electric circuit, we have the cable, this is the conducting wire, the cell, the switch, and the lamp. And the cell, which is the battery, provides the charge that flows around the circuit. And when the switch is closed, the lamp glow. That means it comes on. But when the switch is open, that means there's a break in the circuit and the lamp will not glow. So the switch is that which close or open the circuit. So that's an example of a simple electric uh, circuit. Now, effect of an electric current. There are three basic effects of an electric current. We have what? One, magnetic effect. When we talk about magnetic effect, this is when electric current flows in the magnet. And we are talking about electromagnetic. E.g., if you are talking about your transformer, if you are talking about your electric bell, then two, eating effects. Eating effect, when you are talking about electric ion, the ion you use in your house, when you connect your ion to electric current, you find out that the ion, the thermostat gets the iron hot. Oh, we are talking about your electric cooker. When you plug your electric cooker also, it gets hot. And the third one is chemical effect. And when we talk about the chemical effect, we are talking about charging the battery. Or we are talking about electroplating. Or even we are talking about electrolysis. These are the three effects of electric current. Which I said, magnetic effects, eating effects, and chemical effects all these three effects are common within our environment if you go check around you'll see this common effect within your environment now also we want to look at potential difference potential difference is the amount of work done in moving a unit positive charge from one point to another mostly from the low from a lower potential to a higher potential or oh, we say that potential difference is the difference in electric potential between the final and the initial location when charge when work is done upon a charge so when the charge is moved from one point to another then we are talking about potential difference it is denoted by pd and it is measured in volts and we use the instrument with the aid of the instrument called voltmeter so we use the voltmeter the voltmeter is very common with the electrician within your environment. You can ask for voltmeter. It's well calibrated. Then we now say that voltage is equal to work done divided by the quantity of charge. Therefore, we say that voltage is equal to W divided by Q. And Q is your quantity of charge. Which we can also say that work done is equal to voltage times quantity of charge. So, in the next class, We'll be looking at electric circuits. We'll be looking at electric circuits. So when I come back, we'll look at electric circuits. Thank you.
welcome back we want to look at electric circuits we said an electric circuit is a part in which electron from a voltage or current source flows the point where those electrons enter an electric circuit is called the source of electron the point where the electron leaves an electric circuit is called returned or at ground an electric circuit is the path for transmitting electric current is the path for transmitting electric current and an electric circuit includes a device that gives energy to the charged particle constituting the current such as a battery or a generator a generator devices that use current such as lamp electric motor comp or computer and the connecting wire or transmitting line. What we are simply saying is that electric circuit is the part in which charges flow through. And when we are talking about electric circuit, most of the time we need some certain comp um, component like the co connecting wires. In electric circuit, the load also, what load do you want to apply to it? The switch is also needed in an electric circuit. So when we are talking about electric, we are simply talking about the part at which uh, the electric charge flows through. Now, types of electric circuits. There are different types of electric circuits. One, we have closed circuit. What do we mean by the closed circuit? We say closed circuit is when the load that is on the, that applied to the circuit is working. E.g., when we have a bulb and the, uh, we have a bulb and the bulb is connected to uh, a battery, and immediately the bulb glow that's on, then the the, the the circuit is closed. Or when you on your generator at home and you go to the switch over and you change it over and immediately all the appliances comes on, then we say that the circuit is what is closed. That is what we mean by a closed circuit. Open circuit. What do we mean by an open circuit? An open circuit is when the load applied on in a circuit didn't come on. It's not working. And why? Is it not working? Is as a result that one of the connecting wires are caught, and therefore there is a gap between the between or in within the circuit. E.g., when you connect a bulb to a, to a, to a battery, and the the connecting wire has caught, you find out that the the bulb didn't come on. Therefore, the we call source situation an open circuit. Or you hung your generator and you went to the switch over, you switch it over. But because maybe one of the wire connecting from the generator to the switch over, there is a wire that is caught, then the circuit is open and is not closed. So therefore, all the appliances in the house will not come on. That's what we mean by open circuit, short circuit. When we talk about short circuit, in short circuit, we find out that when the positive and the negative connecting wires, the, the, the both the red and the black connecting wires, when they overlap on each other, therefore the appliance or the load will not come on. There is call such short circuit. Because that's short circuit. So until when you separate the two connecting wires, then we can have the circuit working well also we have what we call series circuits when we talk about series circuits series circuits is eg when you connect bulb in such a way that they are side by side to each other they are side by side to each other in such situation we, we find out that all the three bulbs we glow but when one is faulty when one is faulty then it affects the other. That's one thing about series connection. That's one thing about series connection. And that series connection is what really mostly affects us in our houses that when there is fault, that they have to, when there is fault in one particular place, they have to disconnect everybody on that line so as to be able to work on it. That's series connection. Then parallel. When we talk about parallel, we have both connected in parallel end to end to each other then in such situation you see the bulb glow on so that is the fifth type of uh, uh, uh circuit connection that we have so 
In the next class, we will look again at the term resistance. Resistance. So when we come back, we look at resistance. Thank you. Welcome back. We, want, we are looking at resistance. We say that resistance is the amount of opposition given to the flow of electric current through a conductor of electricity. Now we can also say a resistance is a measure of the opposition to the current flow in an electric circuit. So what we are saying is that the amount of hindrance, opposition of electric charge flowing in the conductor is what we regard as resistance. And resistance is measured in ohms, symbolized by a Greek letter omega. And Simon Holmes, a German physics who studied the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, make more explanation on the relationship between the three. And that is why we say resistance is the opposition that a substance offers to the flow of electric current. So when we are talking about resistance, we are still continue, we'll continue to talk about the amount of opposition, resistance, injuries to the flow of electric charge. Now let's look at the factor affecting resistance of the wire. The factor affecting the resistance of the wire, one, length is one of the factor. And that's why I say resistance is directly proportional to its length. And two, we say that area of cross section, area of cross section. Then three, nature of the wire. What is the nature of the wire? What is the 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 the, the material, the wire, the conductor? What is it made of from? Then we also say temperature. The temperature of the material also is also a factor. So we have four factors. We said one, the length. We said two, the cross sectional area. Three, we say we say that the nature of the material, and four, we say the temperature. The temperature is also. Now let's state Ohm's law. What is Ohm's law? Ohm's law states that the electric current in a given metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its end, provided that temperature and the temperature of the conductor and other physical factors such as length and cross-sectional area remain constant. I repeat myself. Ohm's law states that the electric current in a given metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its end, provided that the temperature of the conductor and other physical factors such as length and cross-sectional area remain constant. As a result of this, one arrives at a mathematical equation that shows the relationship between voltage, current, and Resistance. We say that V is proportional to I, and we introduce the constant. We say that V is equals to I half. So where I is the current through the conductor in unit of ampere, V is the voltage measured across the conductor in unit of volts, and R is resistance of the conductor in unit of ohms. More specifically, Ohm's law, Ohm's law states that R in this relation is constant, independent of the current independent of the current application of ohm's law ohm's law helps us in determining either the voltage current or resistance in a linear electric circuit when the other two quantities are known so we use ohm's law when we know two quantities out of the three quantities voltage current and resistance most basic components of electricity are voltage current and resistance so ohm's law shows a simple relationship between these three quantities let's look at the class work for today the first one evaluation one it says state ohm's law and as we have said we said that ohm's law states that the electric current in a given metallic conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its end provided that temperature of the conductor and other physical factors such as length and constitutional area remain constant two it says divine Potential difference. Potential difference is the work done in taking a unit charge from one point to another. We said from a lower potential to a higher potential. Then the next one, we are asked to draw a simple electric cell. So if you look at the diagram, previous diagram in our, at the beginning of the node, you'll see that. So we have assignments also. 
we have assignments and classwork that we could not finish. It should be displayed on the screen. He said, he says, draw, draw resistance in parallel and in series. State condition for a conductor to be Ohm's law. And the last one, it says that a 50 column flow through a conductor, if the potential difference between its end is 20 volt, calculate the work done. And our reference material are from Essential Physics by O.E. Faraday, New Secondary School Physics, PNOKK, are displayed then. A website that's www.physicstutorial.org. Thank you.